Hey everyone, now for many of you, you may have heard of the spotted lanternfly or abbreviated to SLF. Now, this is a common insect in Asia where the Ailanthus, aka Tree of Heaven, or as I like to nickname it, Tree of Hell, originates from. Now, the uh, Ailanthus species, they brought it over from somewhere in Asia to the U.S. as a landscape plant, primarily because it looked nice and it had a nice shade after growing pretty quickly. And for many people, it was very favorable to at least have shade within a few years rather than waiting 10 to 15 or even 20 years just for the shade that you could get if you had a little grove of Ailanthus. Now, unfortunately, that plant has spread and for many of you who live in the US, primarily say Pennsylvania, Maine, New York, New Jersey, Delaware, it's fairly common and I'm not sure about anywhere else in the US, but I'm pretty sure that it spread a lot of the way throughout the US and it really thrives in areas that replicate China and other Asian countries. Now, it's been a while, but that it's allowed the possibility of the spotted lanternfly to take hold of the US. And this is a problem because the spotted lanternfly actually will eat anything and everything. And while the adults primarily will eat Ailanthus, the nymphs will pretty much eat everything and anything. If you love peaches, that's something it'll eat. If you love oak trees, that's something it'll eat. There's pretty much nothing that it will not eat as long as it is a tree or woody perennial or shrub, you name it, it probably will eat or at least damage the plant at s to some extent. Now, compared to like the emerald ash borer, this one could impact the entire agriculture sector as we know it because, well, Georgia, if spotted lanternfly lands in there, it could destroy most of the peaches. If it, well, it technically has taken hold of New Jersey and that means that it can end up damaging, let's see, the wine industry, the peach industry, I'm not sure about hazelnut industry. I think it might damage pretty much a whole bunch of the industry. I'm not really well versed on it, but the spotted lanternfly is, well, Luckily, it's pretty easy to identify because it's a pretty big bug. I mean, like, it's like that big. Um, at least the ones that I've seen, both in person when it was alive and as, like, educational things. Because when I went to Rutgers, I actually learned a little bit about it. Generally, knowing that it will damage pretty much anything and everything that most people will love and if you live in any of the areas that spotted lanternfly has and may spread to it started in pennsylvania it's reaching new jersey but i'm pretty sure it's reached a few other states in this area i believe there was a sighting recently in i think i forget if it was massachusetts connecticut or rhode island but it was one of those three i'm pretty sure they found a dead one and of course a dead a dead insect doesn't mean anything but it does mean that there was one in that area whether it was dead and was on someone's car or it died shortly after getting there who knows but that dead one could be one that already laid eggs and there's an egg mass somewhere now if anyone sees an egg mass which looks like this you should scrape it off because most of the time it's on, it's not on something that you can really destroy so you have to kind of scrape it off with a uh, razor of some sort 
And once you scrape it off, douse it in insecticidal soaps, alcohol, you know, like hand sanitizer. Pretty sure that just about any chemical can probably kill them. And you can also pretty much just burn them or flash freeze them with liquid nitrogen or dry ice, but I don't think many people have either of those. So if you have like a propane torch or a little butane torch, you could just have the egg mass that you scrape off, place it into a, a metal container or onto some wood and just burn that. Um, if you find any nymphs, which the first through third instar looks like this, in a way it's kind of like a reverse Dalmatian. It's black with white spots rather than white with black spots. And then the fourth instar looks like this, which in a way from afar could look kind of ladybug-esque, but it's pretty big and pretty sure it's about like the size of my finger, the first joint there. Um, so it's unlikely you will think it was a ladybug, but it is a red nymph with black and white splotches as well as red wing pads, which I don't think that that will fly, but once it becomes an adult, it will fly, but it doesn't necessarily fly that much. It just kind of uses the wings as a way to guide its hopping. It's actually a leaf hopper. It looks like a moth. It looks like this. And if you find anything that is a spotted lanternfly, or you believe is a spotted lanternfly, kill it, bag it up, just to make sure that even if it is alive still, through whatever means you've used, whether you've sprayed it with insecticidal soap, insecticides, or whatever, at least putting it into a bag, it will pretty much suffocate whatever whatever chance it has at living, especially if it's an egg, because an egg can survive the winter. So even if you just put it into a bag, it could hatch and you could have little nymphs in the plastic bag, but chances are, since eggs kind of need to breathe as well, the eggs will have died because of suffocation. And if you live in an area that has been quarantined, I'll put a list of it at the end of this video, as well as putting a bunch of um, resources, um, primarily New Jersey, but I will probably add Pennsylvania and any other state spotted lanternfly program. Chances are, if you can't find them or I can't find them, I will link the um, agricultural extension for whatever state because that's better than not saying anything because us horticulturalists, everyone in agriculture, all the farmers really do not want to have to deal with a plant pest as devastating as it would be because it could skyrocket prices for every fruit that you could imagine. It could actually affect, I mean, I. I don't remember all of the plants it can actually eat off of and thrive on, but it can pretty much affect the entire agricultural industry as we know it from just lumber wood to fruits and veggies, though I'm not sure how many veggies it will actually attack. I think it's only a few and it's not as prevalent as any tree crops. But check the links down below for resources you may need. And here are the quarantined counties and states of the U.S. Anyways, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. If you like this content, let me know. See you in the next one.